Shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakhakadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, the great Muslim of the well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above of all. Back at it with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Lord's will, this video is edifying. All right, and without further ado, we're just going to get right into it, man. Okay? I'll read that scripture, Bible for sure. All right, this is uh, Luke chapter 21, verse 19. And it reads, in your patience, possess, uh, possess ye your souls. Right. In our patience, we're possessing our souls, man. And what are we being, what are we being patient for? We're being patient unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Hashem Shai. Like scripture, like like the Apostle Tar coined this year, 2021, the year of hastening the day of Yahweh Hashem Shai. You know. So that's what we're doing. We're hastening the day, but we're also being patient for it. And a part of our patience, because when, you, when you're going to the word patience, it means suffering. All right, so a part of our patience and our suffering is for us to remain in this truth. The right. scriptures say that we are prisoners of hope. Right. Okay, now a prisoner, you know, he hastens the day that he gets freed from that prison. Nonetheless, the thing to keep him grounded and stable for the time being while he's in there is patience, man. You know, yes, we hasten the day of the Lord. But we also have to have that balance and be patient and not try to take matters into our own hands, not try to set up our own kingdom on this side. No, we wait on the day of Yahweh Bashim al Shai, okay? Because we understand that's when truly everything's going to be set back in its proper order, man. Right. All right? And so the reason why I say that is because you have a lot of dudes that come into this faith and they're not patient. You know, they try to go back into the world and establish their own empire on, on this side, you know? That's right. But the Lord is not dealing with that. You know, and that and those dudes who lost patience. Matter of fact, Bible Shah, can you get that Sirach chapter two? Sirach two. All right, because a lot of them dudes they go right back into the world. Why? Because they lose patience, man. All right, and then I want to look up the scripture too. Can I borrow your phone, Bible Shah? Water out there. And like the brother says, you know the some you know some people lose patience, and then when they see these prophecies, you know um, when they see these prophecies revealing itself, they try to come back in. Right, um, start at verse 12, All right, this is Ecclesiastes, uh, Ecclesiastes, or Sirach, chapter 2, verse 12, and it reads, Woe, woe be to fearful hearts and faint hands, and the sinner that goeth two ways. Right. Woe unto him that is faint-hearted, for he believeth not. Yeah, faint-hearted, all right, meaning you have a weak mind. All right, you believe not. And in, in order to believe in Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, you need to have a strong mind. Because scripture says faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if you believe something is there even though you can't see it, that takes mental strength in a way. Ultimately that takes faith, but that also takes mental strength too. That's right. Because a weak mind would be like, I can't see it, so that's it. You know? Hmm. And that's the same thing what you do to get weak in the faith. You can't see the kingdom afar off because Ultimately, you lack patience and you lack faith. That's right. Go ahead. Therefore, shall he not be defended. Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Shah, shall visit you? Right. What are you going to do for those who lost patience, man? All right. What you going to do in that day? You know, when, when Yahweh Hashem Shah pulls up in them chariots, man. And you're going to be like, fuck, I should have listened. I should have waited. I should have been patient. I only had to wait a little longer, and I would have been I would have been able to part, be a part of that number. You know? Read that again, Baba Kushar, because that's a heavy scripture. Uh, this is uh, Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter uh, 2, verse 14, and it reads, Woe unto you that have lost patience, and what will you do, what will ye do when the Lord shall visit you? Right. Okay. What you going to do when the Lord shall visit you, man? All right, keep reading, Baba Kishon. Come. They that fear the Lord will not disobey his word, mm -hmm. and they that love him will keep his ways. So that's what fear of the Lord is, not disobeying his words. If you love the Lord, you keep his ways. Right. That's what the fear of the Lord is, man. And it's going to say fear is the beginning of wisdom, man. All right, nonetheless, like the brother brought out, patience, right? Wants you to have lost patience, right? This is second, and that's actually through the spirit too, because we was talking about the fear of the Lord earlier before we kicked on the video. Right. Nonetheless, this is Second Peter one, 
and I'll start at verse 1, all right? The water, Akio. 2 Peter 1 and 1, all right? Bear with me, Baba Kusha. Actually, I'll just read it off the phone for the sake of time, if you don't mind. It's 2 Peter 1 and 1. It says, Simon, a Peter, and, a, and an apostle of Yahweh Shemashiach, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of the Most High and our Savior, Yahweh Shemashiach, Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh and of Yahweh Shai, our Lord. Verse 3, according as his divine power hath given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Yeah, like the brother's been saying lately, think life, you know. Right. The Lord has given us the things that attain unto life, man, which is righteousness. This, this, these, uh, this word, all right, because the scriptures say that the Lord's law, such as the commandments, is the doctrine of life, and ultimately the law, such as commandments, are all embodied in this book, this word, you know, from the front to the back page, man. All right. Nonetheless, I read that again. According as His divine power hath given us, given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that has called us unto glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, which is the kingdom. Those are those exceeding great. And precious promises, man. Right. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Meaning we're going to get new bodies. We're going to get angelic-like bodies. That's the divine nature, man. And it all starts with our spirit. The Lord is making us partakers of his divine nature spiritually, first and foremost. That's his spirit. It says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So mm. that's what we have escaped. We have escaped the world through the spirit. All right? So there's nothing for us to go back into. And that's what the moral of this lesson is all about. But it all starts with that patience, man. All right? Because it's just like, you know, if you're going through something uncomfortable, but it's to make you better, all right? You, the, Your flesh, your weak mind, what does it do? You want to get out of that uncomfort immediately. Right. You know, you take a cold shower. You take an ice bath. You know, it's good for your body, but it's uncomfortable, you right. know? So, really, that takes what? Patience, man. And patience meaning what? Suffering. At the, uh, you know, especially in this flesh, when something's uncomfortable, you tend to, you know, give up. You know, so that's what these dudes in the truth do. When things don't go their way, or you know, they cleaving onto their flesh, they give up because yep. they don't see the things, you know, in the future as the Lord promised us. Ooh, and that's the spirit, because the scripture's gonna say that, and I'm gonna read it. Uh, All right, this is for Second Peter one and four. It's all through the spirit. It says, "Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises." That you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, temperance meaning self-control, self-restraint, and temperance, we need temperance in order for us to remain in this faith, all right, because temperance ultimately means having uh, self-control, ruling your spirit, you know, and we need temperance so we don't fall to the will of the lust of the flesh, you know, because like, Let's say we used to like to smoke back in the world. If we didn't have temperance over our bodies, we would be smoking whenever. Right. You know. So this faith take in this faith it takes temperance. These are all the key things you need in order to be fruitful in the faith. It right. says into knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, right. and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. And it's the spirit because literally before the camera cut on, we was talking about charity, man. Right. You know, um, we were talking about alms, which is a form of charity. All right. Now, I want to keep in mind when you read verse three, ultimately verse four, but verse three through seven, those are all traits of becoming a God. OK, because what, what what does the list lead up to godliness? You know, and what does it start off saying? The divine nature. So when you have these traits in you, that's how you become a God like unto Yahweh Bashim al -Shah. Verse 8, it says, For if these things be in you and abound, meaning you have these qualities and they grow, okay? Because you have to grow in this faith. You can't just be like, oh, well, you know what? Oh, I'm, 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 I'm content with the amount of work that I put in for the Lord. No, nah, you should always want to be doing more. Right. All right? It says, they, it says, They make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Yes, yeah, so the Lord said that... Um, any tree that does not bear fruit shall be hewn down and cast into the fire. So the Lord said right here, if you have these qualities about you, you will never be unfruitful in the faith, man. Okay? It says, but he that lacketh these things is blind, 
and cannot see it far off. Just like what the brother said earlier, he can't. They can't see the kingdom ahead of us. You know, it said that through the Spirit. That's exactly what the Scripture is saying. Second Peter one and nine. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Oh. So that's the point on that right there. We've been purged from our old sins. So there's nothing to go back onto, man. That's right. And that's really the point on that right there. Oh. Verse ten. Wherefore the rather brethren. Give diligence, when you go into the word diligence in that particular scripture, in the Greek, it means to study and to labor. You have to study in this thing of ours, and you got to labor, man. This truth is a labor, okay? It says, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Right. All right? And that's plain and simple. That's right. You know? And when you even look, you know, what, what, what would you even want to go back to? Look at you know America, Babylon, and Great. You know, there's nothing here, you know, for you so called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. Black, I got another scripture to back you up. Come on, go ahead, Austin. Oh, let me get it real quick. All right, because the scriptures say, like the brother said, there's nothing here, right? That's why the scriptures say in um, uh, somewhere in the New Testament, but it says, um, here we have no continuous city, roughly paraphrasing. That's right, and that's. That's the spirit, cause you know yesterday, or if it wasn't yesterday, it was two days ago. You seen what happened at the Capitol? Um, if that was you, you know, you tribes, you know, it would have been a different story, you know. But um, just to say that, um, you know, e, you know, Esau did that, and nothing happened to him, you know. So is that the type of place, or is that the type of you know so-called government that you would want to be a part of, where you know if it's you know, uh, if you, you know, you black, so-called uh, uh, Hispanic and Native Americans, you, you know, think you're protesting and you get, you know, you get slain in the streets and you got, you know, you so-called white people, they do the same thing and it's different. Is that a thing you, you like, is that something you, you would want to be a part of here? That's just to show you that this place is through. There's nothing here for you. Right. In Hebrews 13 and 14, for here have we no continuing city. That's right. But... We seek one to come. Right. All right. So we're seeking a kingdom, man. And that's all a part of hastening the day of Yahweh and Bashem al right. Baba Kashah, can you get 2 Peter the third chapter, matter of fact? Since you're already uh, by the book. Come. 2 Peter 3, start at um, verse 8, Baba Kashah. All right. This is uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8. And it reads, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Yep. The Lord, Yahweh Shem Yahshah, is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yeah, so the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, because you got some dudes out here who you lack patience, because you think the Lord is slack. You don't think the Lord ever coming back. That's right. You know, that's why you go back into the world. But like the scripture just read, you cannot see afar off. And that's the thing about having patience and learning to love to catch hell. Right. Because you see the bigger picture, man. All right? It's the same thing when someone's pissing you off, all right, and your flesh wants to automatically react. But when you have patience, you walk spiritually you, you assess the situation spiritually. You look at it from all different angles, man. All right? You go outside your flesh and you examine yourself from all different angles with a uh, non-biased, you know, examination, if you will, just strictly doctrinal. All right? Point being, you see the bigger picture. That's right. You know? So for you dudes who lack patience in Yahweh Shem Shai, you don't see the bigger picture. That's why you go back into the world, which leads you to nothing but death, really. That's right. The scriptures, Salak, yes. another head I was going to say, the scriptures say, he that wandereth out of the way of the congregation of understanding, and no, Salak, he that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. All right? And also in Sirach, the 26th chapter, it says that a man who leaves this faith and goes back into the world, the Lord prepares such a one for the sword. Right. Roughly paraphrasing, meaning the Lord is going to fucking kill you, man. Right. Lest you repent. Lest you repent. And that's the spirit. Uh, if you keep reading on this chapter, verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. So for you dudes that, you know, fell out, 
that's how it's gonna come. You think that this world is gonna continue, but the you know the Lord gonna come as a thief in the night. So you know the brothers that's laboring, you know fearing the Lord, doing the work, you know in that day we hope the Lord has mercy on us, but we're gonna be prepared for you brothers that fell out. You know you're not gonna know what to do because you thought this day was never gonna happen. Yeah, that's like the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Right. The wise virgins were prepared. That way, when Yahweh Shai knocked. He was, they were able to open in onto him immediately because they were already prepared waiting for him. Exactly. But the foolish versions, they had to go and get their oil. So by the time they was going to get their oil, boom, Yahweh shot came, man. And it was too late for their ass. That's right. So that's why you have to stay ready so you don't got to get ready in this faith, man. Come on, that's right. All right, keep reading Bible Sean, that second Peter. Come on, uh, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with a fer fervent heat. The earth also and the works that... Isn't it the same thing, though? Oh, it's wild, you. We rolling, though. Uh, we rolling? Kind of. Keep reading, Bob. All right, uh, verse 10. But the, day, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The heat also... And the works that are the earth, therein. The earth also. Shalom. The earth also. Oh, shalom. The earth also, and the works that are that are therein shall be burned up. Yeah, because of the missiles. All right, that's the that's that's what's gonna make the elements melt with fervent heat. It's gonna be the nuclear missiles, man. All right, which should be shot off in the midst of World War Three. That's right. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons all ye? to be in all holy conversations and godliness. Yeah, we're supposed to be conducting ourselves as men of the Lord. Seeing that this place is getting ready to be destroyed, how are we supposed to be acting? Like men of the Lord. That's right. And the thing about men of the Lord is that men of the Lord are going to endure. That's right. Men of the Lord are going to wait for Yahweh Bashmael Shai. It says, well, uh, in Matthew, he that endured to the end, the saying shall be saved, verse of paraphrasing. Yeah, exactly. And the scripture say, ye that fear the Lord, Go not aside, you know, roughly paraphrasing, man. You know, ye that fear the Lord, wait for him. You know, right. I think it's in Psalms, maybe. You know, I'm not sure. I think it's either in Psalms or Sirach, but I know there's a scripture for a fact that says, ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, you know, roughly paraphrasing, you know? All right. All right. Well, keep reading. Bible Kusha. Come on. Verse 12. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of the Most High. Yeah. Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall met shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness going back to hebrews right. for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come our mind is set on the kingdom of heaven our mind isn't set on this world all right so that's a part of that's another thing part of the patience you have to understand that this isn't our time. That's right. Like Yahweh Shai said, um, uh, if, 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 basically Yahweh Shai said in the book of John, I'm going to read it real quick for edification's sake. This is John, um, and just a little thing to add while the brother's looking, uh, looking for that, you know, uh, scriptures say, you know, uh, arise ye and depart. This is not our rest. Right. But you can add that, brother. Yeah. It's not, it's not our rest, man. This isn't our kingdom. All right. This is John uh, 18 and verse 36. Yahweh Shai answered, My kingdom is not of this world. That's right. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Yeah. And we know this is in Yahweh Shai's kingdom. Because Babylon ain't destroyed yet. Right. Because there would be no such thing as all this type of debauchery going on in Yahweh Shai's kingdom, in the kingdom to come. That's how we know this ain't Yahweh Shai's kingdom. So just like how it's not Yahweh Shai's kingdom, it's not our kingdom, man. Because we're supposed to be his servants. We're supposed to be his men. All right? And matter of fact, can you get Sirach 22 real quick, Baba Shah? Because like they say in the world, stay down until you come up. Right. Or no new friends, you know. Basically, that's the same thing in the faith. All right, we're staying down till we come up, man. We're staying down. We're being faithful to Yahweh Hashem El Shai till his kingdom is established. So right now, you know, we, we going through what we going through 
All right, but that's ultimately to make us hate Babylon, you right. know, because ultimately we're not of this world, man. Right. Sirach 22 and verse 23, Bible Kishaw. All right, shit, I mean, shit. Wouldn't you want to Eve to be with you even when you're at your lowest point and not only when you're at your highest, man? That's right. So why aren't you niggas keeping that same energy concerning Yahweh Bashem al Shai? Right. You don't want your Eve to just be around you when you up, you got money. You know, you want your Eve to be with you when you broke too, right? Right. So how much more for you? How about Shai? Right. And this and this scripture is gonna go into. Go ahead, Bible Show. It just shows you know brothers lack of faith. Yep. All right. This is a Sirach, chapter twenty-two, verse twenty-three, and it reads: Be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty, that thou mayest rejoice in his prosperity. Right. So we're being faithful, Lord. When we be part of that number, like the Lord said, let thy prophets be found faithful, Lord. When we be those men. Right. But it says, be faithful to thy neighbor in his poverty. Who is our neighbor? Yahweh Shai in this in this instance. We're being faithful to him in his in his poverty. How? Because his kingdom is not established yet. That's right. So he's by technicality in his poverty. You know? Can you read it? Uh, abide steadfast unto him. Abide steadfast. That's right. Not meaning, okay, I'm with Yahweh Shai today, but if he don't come uh, tomorrow. I'm going with Esau. Yep. That's not abiding steadfast. Right, abide steadfast unto him in the time of his trouble. Yeah, and we're getting ready to face times of trouble, man. That's and right. you niggas gonna be going through that trouble too, cause you didn't you turned your back on the Lord. Just like how going back to what we read earlier, we want you to have lost patience for what you shall you do when the Lord shall visit you, man. Because right. he's coming to visit. Best believe that. Best believe. So you might as well just be in order. Come. That thou mayest be here with him. Eric. Be, be uh, heir, Shalakon. that thou mayest be heir with him in his heritage. Right, man. Okay, so if same thing out of scripture say, if we want to be glorified with Yahweh Shah, we have to suffer with him, man. Right. Suffer going back to patience, man. And we got nothing to go back into the world anyways for, man. Right. There's nothing to turn back to. Right. Go ahead, Barbara Shaw. Come, for a mean estate is not always to be contemned. Uh, contemned. Yep. Nor the rich that is foolish to be had in admiration. Yeah, so you basically, Jake, when they go back into Babylon, they want to live the Babylonian dream. They want to go viral. <laughs> you know, Jake want to... Uh, go on TikTok. Jake want to do all types of folly, you know. Besides serving the Lord. Besides serving the Lord, man. And that's the thing. That's because they're, admir they're, they're, having, they're admiring, you know, the rich, okay? Ultimately because what? Like we was just saying earlier... Before we cut the camera on, it's all spiritual. Right. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. So who's first in this kingdom? Wicked niggas. That's why you seeing niggas like Floyd Mayweather, you know, all these wicked ass rappers and shit. They got nice cars, houses, clothes, money, all this other shit. Yeah, they first right now. So, but the scriptures say, the, the nor the rich, that is foolish. They're foolish, man. Right. They may be rich, but they're spiritually foolish. It says to be had in admiration. So when you want to go back into that stuff, that means you're admiring them. And that's why it says a mean estate is not always to be contemned. Meaning, yeah, you know, spiritually, you know, we might be living in the ghettos, so to speak. Or physically, I'll say physically. Physically, we might be living in the ghettos, you know, run down neighborhoods and stuff like that. But guess what? That's only for a time being, man. And ultimately, we're still right with Yahweh Shemel Shai. And that's worth more than living in a mansion and being wicked, man, and rich. That's you know? right, and, and, and that's spiritual, because that's how the Lord got to set it up. Imagine if you, you know, had these things, had these riches, you think that you would be, you know, you know, into the Lord how you are right now? You know, that's why, you know, the brother was bringing out the first, the last, um, the, say it again, brother. So the, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. That's right, and, and, and you see that today. You know, two-thirds is first right now. You see, the, the, you know, the true men of the Lord, you know, go catching hell yeah and that's why the scriptures say the lord chastens us so that we're not condemned with the rest of the world because the lord he's just gonna drop it on them like a like a wrecking ball man right. but with us he corrects us by measure no don't go that way no turn this way you know little by little until okay we're on that straight line we're perfect but for the world the lord letting them go through that wide gate they do whatever the fuck they want to do but when it's time for them to hit that wall the Lord going to drop all that judgment on their ass, man. And that's coming very soon, man. That's why I sure say, we want you to have lost patience for what you shall you do 
when the Lord shall visit you, man. Right. And another thing that I want to touch on through, this is a spiritual point that I wanted to get. This is Sirach or Ecclesiastes 6 and 7. If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So right now the Lord is proving us. He's not being hasty, meaning he's not being quick to credit us. Because ultimately, what's crediting us? Giving us the kingdom of heaven. But he has to prove us and make sure that we're worthy of it. All right? Because scripture says, many is called, but few are chosen. Right? That's right. Now, look at this spiritually. Verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. And that's right. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Again, meaning they're going to talk shit about you. They're going to let everybody know your secrets after y'all, you know, y'all friendship don't work out no more. All right. And that's the same thing with a lot of you niggas do, too. Oh, man. Fuck that Hebrew Israelite thing. Da, 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 da. You know, but really <laughs> you just threw, you know what I'm saying? Really? You just got demons on you. That's why you, like it says, you know, being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Verse 10. Here's the point. Again, some friend is a companion at the table. Meaning, when shit is sweet, he's going to be your friend. At the table, meaning when you're eating good, it says, and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. You know? So, they're not going to be anywhere to be found when you're hurting, man. You know? And you're going to know who your true friends are in adversity. And that's why it says, but in thy prosperity, he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. It says, and if, it says, if thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. Okay? It says... Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. And also, and there's another scripture too where it says how um, a friend cannot be, or an enemy cannot be hid in adversity, roughly paraphrasing. And a friend cannot be known in prosperity. Because you don't know who your true friends are so you truly go through something and you see who's there for you. That's you right. know, but when you up, when you're doing good, everybody want to be cool with you. Everybody want to be your friend. And that's something that I learned back at, when I used to play sports, man. All right. When I made a good play, everybody want to congratulate me, all this shit like that. But if I fuck up, don't nobody want to give you acknowledgement. Don't nobody even want to look at you. Don't nobody want to talk to you, man. That's you know, right. certain sports, man, that you play. So how much more now in this faith, man? You know, so the point being, you know, Yahweh Shem is trying us. Here it is. Yahweh Shai said, you are my friends if you do whatsoever I tell you. So a part of us being the Lord's friends is struggling with him. You know, you got a friend that you're close with and they struggling. Guess what? You struggling too. Because we're all a body. Right. You know, like the scripture say, if one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, man. Right. Suffer meaning what? Patience. Right. Just like how Yahweh Shai had to wait for his kingdom, same way God, we got to wait for ours, man. Because our kingdom is Yahweh Shai's kingdom. We're going to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, Lord willing. Lord willing. You know, but nonetheless, guess what? He don't get his kingdom yet, neither do we, man. Right. All right? And we're not going to just fucking go back and try to establish our own shit and do our own program. Like it says... Uh, be a friend on his own occasion. We're not going to try to go do our own shit in Babylon. I wanted to uh, get that. Uh, verse 8, where it says, For a man, for some man, is a friend for his own occasion. For his own occasion. That's what some of these, you know, some of these brothers, you know, I see, you know, a lot of people just follow the trends. Right. You know, for after right now, the Hebrew Israelite is the thing to follow up, and then like, too much down the line, they out of it. Yep. Because they doing things for their own occasion. Come That's right. So like, brother, nah, that's right. the point. That's the point on that right there, man. Mm -hmm. All right? Ain't nothing to go back onto, man. And now, I, I got some other precepts through the Spirit, but um, what you got? Um, next one I had was, you have John chapter yep, 6? Yep, I got John. This is John chapter 6, starting at verse 63. It says, It is the Spirit that quickeneth the flesh, profiteth nothing. Come. All right, so you going back into the flesh, that's not going to profit you anything. It says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Yahweh knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore I said unto you that no man can come unto me except they were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. So you, you even had fallouts back then. That's right. And he's the same spirits here today. Right. And they was with Yahweh Shai. So if they fell out when Yahweh Shai is right there with them in this, like just how this brother sitting with me, Yahweh Shai is literally sitting amongst them and them niggas still fell out, man. So how much more in these times when they can't even see the Lord? Right. How much more? How much more, man? All right. And there's nothing to fucking go back onto anyways, man. And Peter, 
Lord willing, we be a part of that same spirit because Peter is King David in the reincarnation, if you can receive it. And King David, what is what is scripture talk about? Being a part of the house of David, man. And right. guess what? The house of David all have this same spirit, and we're going to read about it. It says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Yahweh shot unto the twelve, we also go away. And he was really just asking them a question just to try them, you know, because he knew. He knew who, like we just read earlier, he knew was going to betray them. But he was just asking them that to try them. All right. Verse 68, here's the point. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. So we want to come in that same spirit, the house of David, you know, because it says what? Whom shall we go? Where are we going to go? Where is there to go? Where is there to go, man? The Lord, you you know, Yahweh Shai, you have the words to eternal life. The Lord, Yahweh Shai, has the key to eternal life. That's the true keys of success. You know? Not fucking establishing your own empire, Esau's empire. It don't make no sense. So Peter was in the right spirit. He's saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? <laughs> you know? Where are we going to go, Lord? What, <laughs> what else is there to go back unto in the world, man? That's basically what he's saying. It says, and we believe and are sure. That thou art that Mashiach, the son of the living power, man. Right? And that's the point on that right there, man. Right. Okay, so we, that's, you see how Peter said that? To whom shall we go? That's that's what the, the, the moral of this lesson is about. Where Where is there to go back to into the world? What is there to go back into into the world? The dollar is failing, okay? These women are out of order. This is a gynocentric society. This society is full of confusion, man. All right? You can't even, Salakia. Oh. Just to add, uh, women want to be men, and men want to be women. Confusion. Confusion. You know? The, and, then, and then on top of that, you know, the, the economy is failing. The jobs are failing. You know, all different types of stuff is failing, man. And then guess what? If you want to function in society, you're going to need a, a Maxine. Okay? You're going to need a chip. That's right. What are you going back onto? You're going back onto death, ultimately. That's right. You're going back onto literal death and spiritual death man all right and if you're going back into spiritual death it's going to lead to physical death man just like how if you're going forward onto spiritual life it's going to lead to physical life man everlasting life man right all right but now um i'm gonna get this last precept lord will this is philippians 3 and verse 8 it says yeah doubtless and i count all things but loss for the excellency of of the knowledge of Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, my Lord, okay? For whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Mashiach. Dung means like poop, okay? So the Apostle Paul is basically saying, I count everything that I lost, shit, just so I can stay within the knowledge, meaning so I can stay within this truth of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. So that's the same thing when we come in this faith. We give up everything. We don't go, we don't try to go back, oh no, let me bring this worldly way back with me into the truth. No, you're supposed to give up everything, man. Right. So that's that's the point, man. What is there to go back onto? Everything is done. You know, we're supposed to count everything done that we may win Yahweh Bashim al Shai. If the Lord tells us, cut your hair. Okay, bet. Lord tells us, don't get a lineup. Okay, bet. Right. Lord tells us, stop eating pork. Okay, bet. Right. You look past that. You don't even think about it no more. You're like, shit, what the fuck is pork? Because what the fuck is there to go back to? Any, that shit was unhealthy anyways. Right. You know? It's like, man. Scripture also says the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So when you do come in this truth and, you know, you want to go back into the world, is you got to pick one. You can't be double-minded. Right. That's the point, though. You got to count everything done that you may win your house by Shemel Shah. Um, right. You got that any more precept, Dr.? Uh, I had that. Uh, you, you, you got the first Timothy? Nah, you got that. All right, uh, this is First Timothy chapter six, verse seventeen, and it reads: Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust them in uncertain riches, but in the living most, uh, in the living power, who given us richly all things to enjoy. Yeah. So basically, the point being, trust not in uncertain riches, because a lot of times Jake fall out this truth for money. You know, money or some type of status or some type of aspiration, which leads to 
more than likely money. That's right. You, you know got, what I'm saying? You got Eve in your ear, <laughs> pressuring you about money. So now you fall out the truth because you gotta go, you know, get this money for Eve. You know, even doesn't it say in uh, is it Sarah? Or you know, the dudes will be doing uh, first Ezra's, yep. first Salaka, first, first Ezra's, where you know Jake is, you know, out here hustling, bringing, robbing, robbing, fighting a bear and a lion, doing everything that you know, everything in the world just to make money for his Eve, or you know, like the brothers said, aspirations, you know, for their own vain glory. God, that's really the point, man. So. Scripture say, trust not in uncertain riches, but trust in Yahweh Shemashai, which freely giveth us all things. The Lord will hook you up in the truth. The Lord could give you a nice car in the truth. That's right. The Lord could give you money in the truth. That's right. The Lord could give you a nice crib in the truth. The Lord give you a nice Eve, too. That's yeah. for you. Right. Exactly. The Lord give you nice clothes, da 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 da. Whatever you need, the Lord can provide it for you. You know, but you just got to be doing what's right in His sight. You know? It's kind of like, um, you know, financing. You know, you get the financing if your credit is right. You know what I'm right. saying? It's so the same thing with Yahweh Shemashai. Your spiritual credit right, he going to finance you. You know? But how you pay him back? By following after his ways. Stay enduring. Enduring, man. That's right. And that's the thing about finances or financing. It's over a period of time. That's right. But you do your payments over a period of time. Same way how we do our vows. We pay our dues. By doing this work, doing this work for Yahweh Shemel Shai, to that day the Lord come and beam us up. Lord willing, man. That's right. That's really the point, though. Car flash, but, um. I think that was, um, no, I think I'm good. Come on. But anyways, um, that was really it. That was it. You got anything else? No, that's Hey, so, Lord willing, this video is edifying. We want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, by Shem Yahweh Double honors to the elders and apostles, great millstone, every well. Peace and blessings to you like the Israel. Shalom and a Baba Ball. Shalom. Moral of the story, we have nothing in this world to go back onto, man. All right. All right. Matter of fact, let me actually close with this precept real quick. Come. Through the Spirit. This is Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of the Most High in Mashiach Yahushai. All right, so we have to press forward, man. We have to keep moving forward towards the goal, not backwards. We have to forget what we did back then in the world and right. press forward unto Yahweh Bashim All right, so with that, call Halayim La Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, Bashim Al Shalom and a Baba Ball.